You're listening to the Clear Creek Resources Podcast from Clear Creek Community Church. To hear more, check out clearcreekresources.org. Sherry, Brianna, it's great to be with you guys today. We're in the middle of a series about blessing and uh, the way we're talking about it is often around the context of parents and children and families. And we, we know that there are people who come to our church that don't have children. There are people that come to our church that are not married. And uh, so my question for you is it, when, when people experience series like this, do they feel, can they feel left out when the message of the church in a particular season is about families and marriage and that kind of thing? I think, Certainly, especially when things are um, specifically directed towards certain groups of people. And um, I know personally, when I first started coming to the church, a lot of the things were oriented to, to well, they seemed oriented towards families. Um, I happen to be a very vocal person. And so <laughs> I think I brought that up pretty quickly with yeah. my small group leaders. Um, and they really encouraged me in ways I could get engaged with the church, um, which helped me. I started with serving. So I don't know. Absolutely. Like when I first came to the church, I was single and not married. So yes, I did feel um, not included, but that's changed. All right. So what, what made you feel not included when you came and you were single? Well, I mean, it's a large church. So when you first walk in and you don't know many people, your stage of life feels amplified. You're like, okay, not only is this a large church, but oh, it's full of families and you see it. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And and you probably, did you come alone? Or did you come with friends? Yeah. Well, I mean, probably the first time I think I came alone, but then quickly realized that I knew a lot of other people here. And then I would come and sit with them. So it didn't feel so alienating, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, we've talked about this. Brianna, you and I have talked about this because of the small group that we were in together for a long time. But if, if you do come to our church alone at any of our campuses and you see even signs for like children this way and students that way, and it's just, it, I, I like the way you said that, Sherry, it can amplify that feeling. So mm-hmm. uh, what would you say to someone who shows up and feels that? I think my main advice is really to honestly engage with the culture that Creek has. Um, it can be really easy to be intimidated by um, all the signs or all of the kids running around, especially if you're not a very kid-oriented person. Um, even a lot of the service areas are oriented towards how to serve family as well. Um, but Creek really emphasizes small groups in building community and becoming known and being able to know other people. Um, and so I do think that there is a place for single people, married couples without kids in small group. Um, and I think that's a really great way to start. Um, and if you're somebody who's prepared to serve a really great way to get to know more people and to feel more engaged is, is to start serving as well. I agree. I think just being obedient to the calling of God to bring you to Clear Creek Community Church and and being in tune with that. And, you know, he asked us to do a lot of things out of our comfort zone. And one of them is stepping into church and just continuing to come because someone at some point is going to greet you or come hug you or engage with you. And even before you get to that step of stepping in a small group. Yeah. 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 And I would say my first couple of weeks, I was invited by a coworker. And w- even when I sat with them the first couple of times, and when I sat with my small group later, all of them were married couples. And so um, I definitely can, you know, relate to when you first come, there's that intimidation, but um, understand that no one around you wants anything more than for you to feel engaged. So none of them have any sort of like, oh yeah, we're families and you're not or anything like that. It's, it's a very welcoming community. So just accepting that and, and being willing to engage with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's the heart of our church. All mm-hmm. people would feel welcome and f- can find a place to take a next step and get plugged into community and serving and all that. Okay. So we're in this series about being blessed. We're calling it the blessing. And what perceptions or what ideas about being blessed by God, did you have going into this series or maybe even a different time in your life that you realize maybe that's not what it means to be blessed by God? I think as a child, um, and I probably can speak for Brianna, most women in our church is that like you think, okay, well, I'm just going to grow up. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have a family and life is going to be great. And that we think is a blessing. And sometimes when life doesn't go that way and you can sort of question, 
um, well, what does a blessing really look like? What, what is my purpose? What am I supposed to be here for? And um, I know most of the season of life that I have been in has been unique um, and somewhat amplified um, in suburban, in suburbia. And so if I were in the city, I don't think I would feel so unique, you know, because there's lots of, you know, different cultures and people and all different stages of life. But I have rested in a verse um, in Luke 145, and it is, blessed is she who would believe that um, the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And so um, just knowing his purpose for my life and that blessings look different to different people in different seasons. And what you define as a blessing is a blessing, getting a close parking spot is a blessing. Children is a blessing. A wonderful marriage is a blessing, a life of singledom, you know? So it's just really in, in that gospel perspective of, you know, what you feel like Christ is um, calling you to and, and being blessed in. Yeah. I think um, definitely that, you know, my younger self and sometimes even now, if I'm not watching myself closely, that I can see God's blessing as being something like marriage or children. Um, and it's actually something that over the past couple years, as I've read through different verses in the Bible that talk about, you know, well, God will bless those who love him and um, those kinds of verses. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so as I've been exploring that, I think I really liked how the sermon put it last week when you were talking about um, it's not just God's provision, but God's presence. Mm -hmm. And so even in the last uh, six or so months of my life, there's a lot more of the, you know, I guess I would call it this struggle side of things in a lot of different areas, but it's been one of the most blessed times of my life as well, because I have been able to easily identify God's presence more readily than any other part of my life. Um, and so that really has stood out to me in this season. Yeah, that's good. I mean, God's presence is ultimate blessing that he would be present in our life, whether good days or bad days, single, married, family, but our culture is all about how blessing is provision. It's like God providing something for me, whether it's a relationship or stuff. And man, it is really a mental shift to think that Mm -hmm. To have God's presence in your life is the greatest blessing you could have. And then he'll provide for you, but often in ways you don't expect. So uh, how do you see God blessing you in your life these days? Um, well, when I first came to Clear Creek Community Church, I was single, <laughs> and now I am married, and now I have a little fur baby. But um, when you do not have kids, I feel like I have been blessed with time and resources. Like, because I don't have kids, I have an immense amount of time on my hands. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, show me what to do with this time. And so it has been um, an opportunity. I really look at it as an opportunity to, to um, be available to my friends who are married or unmarried. Um, I, I can be that 3 a.m. friend that you call and say, hey, you know, I'm struggling. Or, hey, I need to go have dinner. Or, hey, can we, you know, have a cup of coffee? Like that. I relish in that. That is a gift that I am able to give others. And, you know, also the gift of service to be able to volunteer. Like I volunteer every single Sunday and, well, most Sundays. <laughs> and that's, you know, I, that's a gift. It's a gift. It's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely second that. I think one of the best things is being able to show up for people in a way that other people definitely can't because yeah. I don't, and I'm not married, so I don't have anybody else's schedule I need to worry about. I'm not waking anybody else up in the middle of the night. If I need to go somewhere, all of a sudden, um, people can come crash at my house if they need to. Um, and I'm not going to wake up any kids. So I think that's definitely one. I think the other thing that I've really been blessed with recently is I'm, I've, taken over the small group from Lance and that's been great. Um, getting to really work with people who are also in our stage of life. Um, and not only help them work through some of these same things, but show them how they can all bless the people in their lives. Because I think one of the things that kind of feels isolating when you're in your singleness or, um, I imagine in <laughs> the early days of marriage as well is, um, as you're navigating all the different relationships in your life, like, um, you can kind of feel like, well, there's not as many things for me to do because I, my schedule doesn't seem the same as the married people or the married people with kids or like, I don't have the same interests as they do. I don't have the same priorities as they do. And so it's hard to kind of fit yourself into those relationships. And so showing them how they can be the 2 a.m. friend or how they do have resources that other people don't have right now um, and watching them kind of try that has been 
incredibly blessing to me in my life. Yeah, I would say most of my, most of our group of friends are married with kids. And so we try to, um, to be conscious of that and that we invite them, we include them in some of our single married or, you know, married, um, childless activities, whether it's dinner parties or, you know, trivia nights or things like that and vice versa. Like we get the, the pleasure of doing life with families and being included in that when kids birthday parties, when we don't have kids and things like that. And they have made it a great, really great job of including us in that. So I feel a blessing, um, with that and just being able to be, um, included in that is really just a blessing. Yeah, we had a, a guy that I knew here at Clear Creek years ago who was stationed here. He's in the Coast Guard and single, didn't have any family in the area because he was from the West Coast, but uh, got to know him and we became friends and spent a lot of time together. And he, he started, I really appreciate uh, the way he interacted with me as a married guy with kids in a completely different stage of life. But he was like, hey man, send me your kid's little league schedule. It'd be great to show up at, to a game on a Saturday. And like, that was just a, a really cool it was cool for him to acknowledge that in me and then like, Oh yeah, man, we would love to have you. And so, Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to the people, you know, without kids, when we're talking about blessing and, and especially leaving a legacy, leaving a legacy for your kids. And that's kind of the, the point of some of what we're talking about these days. What would you say to people without kids to encourage them about here's how you can bless others and even, uh, think about leaving a legacy. I think that, Blessing others really comes back to the point we've been talking about in the sermons, just that God's blessing is his presence. And so when we can help bring about his kingdom into this world, that is our biggest part in giving his blessing to other people. And so I think for a lot of the people in my life right now, the thing that they need to hear most is about um, prioritization and obedience, just Mm -hmm. that you would look for opportunities to use the time and the resources that you have and then follow through. Um, You know, don't say you're going to show up and then don't show up, right? It's about making the time and understanding that, yeah, maybe it, it can feel alone, but you're not going to feel engaged until you also step up to the plate and give some of yourself. So that would definitely be my challenge to people in my stage of life, just that they would, um, prioritize the, the, it's really a form of generosity, right? Using your time and your resources to um, bring about God's kingdom, whether that be serving or being the 2 AM friend or, um, just doing something nice for somebody else and then follow through with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, I really like that. Yeah. It would be for me just being aware. Um, we can get so in our own lane and so focused on what we have in front of us that we exclude or not unintentionally exclude. And so I would just say awareness in that, um, who you're talking to, um, who you're inviting, who you're around, um, cause you never know what season people are walking through. And so just the awareness, um, and the gift of inclusion, because we love, and we all want to be seen. We all want to be a part. Um, and so just invite us into whatever season you're walking with, with your kids. Like you said, like inviting them to your son's basketball game or something like that. Like, I love that. That is such a gift to me that you included me and my husband in that. And so, um, just being aware and, and don't exclude anyone, um, in this season. Yeah. Yeah. I think it kind of goes both ways, right? Like we can each get in our own little bubbles and forget Mm -hmm. that like a lot of, um, my married with kids friends think, Oh, they don't want to be bothered with the kids, but I love to go and hang out with my friends, kids. <laughs> They're so yeah. exciting. So, um, you know, especially if it's every once in a while, like, you know, inviting people over, um, you know, and, and just on, on both fronts, right. That like, mm-hmm. if you're singled or married without kids or married with kids, just understanding that like whatever other season is, there are ways for you guys to engage with each other. And if you are doing that intentionally, I, li- I like the awareness point, just if you're doing that intentionally, you guys can all come together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is that what you'd say to people with kids who certainly have friends that don't have kids? Uh, how would you encourage them to, uh, to, you know, help, Help those without kids bridge the gap in leaving a legacy. One of my favorite things so far has been free food. Um, <laughs> still very much in that yeah. stage of life. Yeah. I mean, I like to cook, but I don't really like to cook just for me. Um, and I think that that's a pretty common sentiment among, among single people because I'll make a meal that's like, okay, I could eat this for four days now. Um, one of the most fun things for me is like my friends, they're like, well, we're, we already made dinner. 
do you want to come have it with us? Right. Um, that's a really easy thing. And it's only, you know, a couple hours. We usually get to talking and catching up. So that's been a really great way. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you said it perfectly, just <laughs> inclusion. And I think for one thing, um, I feel like God has put a purpose in my life to also help women identify families, you know, still identify themselves outside of the role as mother and wife and caretaker and all those types of things. So I host a book club and it's a safe space. We have women that are married. We have single women like, and that it's a, it's a great place to just come together over the love of books and just being able to bridge that gap and not make you feel so alone in those seasons. That's what I would say. And leaving a legacy through that in, um, that I feel like I want to be known as living out the gospel. Like I always say on my tombstone, it's going to say she loved Jesus, waffles, and coffee. And I laugh about that because I want I, I want people to see me working out the gospel and we can model that first in our homes, you know, for our families. Yeah, one of the things that I get to give attention to with my job here at Clear Creek is just family ministry overall, the way we, we seek to help families. And we've been really influenced over the years by a book called Sticky Faith by Kara Powell and Chap Clark. And one of the things that they wrote in there, and what I'm trying to do is bring together everything you guys are saying because it's so rich. Uh, one, of, one of the points that they make that they found in all their research is to flip the ratio that churches have in mind for adults to kids. So when you're planning, say, a student ministry activity or a children's ministry activity, you, a lot of the time you're trying to figure out how many adults do I need or how many, yeah, how many adults do I need so that I know how many kids to expect. So we'll, often they'll say, we need one adult for every five kids. But in their book, Sticky Faith, they flip the ratio and say, really, every child needs at least five adults who are influential in their lives. And so that can't just be the job of parents. Uh, parents need all kinds of help from volunteers who serve in these ministries to friends and family that are extended that can influence kids. And so what you guys do when you're in, involved in the life of a child that's not yours matters because kids need safe adults. Can you think of a time in your life, like I bet you can each remember a, a time in your life where someone invested in you that wasn't, it wasn't your parents, but they invested in you and it's still paying off. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. I think when I first moved out here, um, after college and I joined my first small group, I mean, that small group was instrumental in changing everything about my life. And I remember talking to my parents about all the people in that group and just, they were like, wow, God really showed up in the biggest way he possibly could have as you move to this new place and you have literally no one, um, how you formed relationships. And it, it, because I was invited by a coworker, I mean, it impacted my relationships at work. It impacted my whole attendance at this church. And, um, now I get to, you know, lead other people through things because of the relationships I built that first year being out here. Um, so I credit so much of that to my first small group and the couples that were there that, poured into me so much. Yeah. Same for me. Like I had a woman that was uh, older and single invited me here to Clear Creek and we joined the same small group. She encouraged me to um, serve in Pee Weeville where I've been serving for seven years now, which is crazy. And um, it's a good thing. And so that those women that I have met through Pee Weeville and serving there have really poured into my life because we're most of them are married and with kids. And it's just, you know, like Sylvia and Beth Hooper and all of them have just loved me through all the seasons from singledom to now. And uh, the ladies in that small group were really impactful um, into the person I am today. That's awesome. Okay. So if you were to say today, like, this is the legacy I know that I can leave. What would you, what would you say to that? How would you answer that question? For me, it would be the legacy of um, serving God's people. Um, I have been a volunteer with Youth for Christ in the Galveston County Juvenile Justice Center for over seven years, going on eight years next month, and just loving and serving those kids, um, sharing the gospel with them. That's Those are my spiritual offspring. And uh, right before the pandemic, I went in there and I had seen a young gentleman that was um, I had seen on the resident side and I hadn't seen him in years. And honestly, I could not remember his name, but he remembered me. And he said, Hey, you're that Bible lady. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I am. And that's the legacy that I want to leave that's for God's awesome. glory. <laughs> that, Bible hey, that Bible lady. Bible, I'm, just gonna, that Bible lady. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling you that. Hey, yeah. Bible lady. Yep. Now I don't even need to remember your name. Yeah. Just, you know, that Bible lady. Got it. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, 
I think for me, a lot of the relationships I have right now and the biggest legacy that I could think of would be just leadership and truth um, and really challenging a lot of the people around me to um, think through things and um, act on them. And so, you know, as a lot of people are intimidated by things that are a little bit outside their comfort zone, I I really hope that my legacy is pushing them outside of that and making them challenge themselves and teaching them ways to wade through the uncomfortable um, so that they can be a blessing to other people. Cool. All right. Well, I really appreciate you guys taking some time today to share your experience and how, how the Lord has helped you find community at Clear Creek. But also just let me say thank you because I know you've served so long with preschool kids and I know Alex is serving with sixth grade boys and he's crazy and that's awesome. <laughs> and Bri Brianna, you've served in uh, with preschool age kids and now in student ministry. And so, I mean, we're thankful for the impact that you you're leaving, you're, that you're making and leaving for the next generation. So the hope is that all of us would would recognize God's blessed us richly, and that's not just for us, that He wants us to share that with others. So thanks for taking the time today. Thank you. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't yet, make sure that you hit subscribe down below and check out clearcreekresources.org. We have videos, books, and sermons on there, as well as our audio podcast. Thanks for watching.